Hey guys, how's it going? Puti Panoi here. Uh, another video today on the spousal visa process. Today, uh, we're going to go over something that people ask me a lot. Uh, and that is how to expedite the uh, um, the NVC uh, portion of the journey. So, uh, we did not expedite our visa application. We filed K3. So our uh, our application was approved in one month. Okay. After your application gets approved, it gets transferred to the National Visa National Visa Center or the NVC. Okay. Uh, we did not expedite that either. We just uploaded all the requirements. I will make another video that goes over that. Uh, but I'm doing this video first because what I did first was request expedite before we even did the NVC stage. Let me explain. So we already covered, after your visa application is approved, it's transferred to NVC, right? Okay. Uh, we did not expedite our NVC process. Uh, the process takes about three months. So do not make any mistakes. Every mistake or RFE that you make is a three months. You make one mistake, you, you have time to upload the documents on the website, you have to wait three months. You make another mistake, it's three months, three months. It's very brutal. So don't make a mistake, prepare everything and I will help you in the next video. But after the NVC is approved, okay, your case gets transferred to the respected uh, US Embassy that you will have your interview, right? In our case, it's the Philippines. So case will be transferred to Manila. Uh, normally what happens is once your NVC uh, stage is approved or DQ'd, documentarily qualified, gets transferred to the embassy. You have to wait till the case is ready before they send you an appointment letter, but not. I want to tell you what I did, and I could be wrong about this. I don't know if it's possible to schedule your own appointment if you don't expedite uh, the NVC. But what we did is I emailed the NVC expedite email uh, and I asked for request to expedite. Now, I'll put the email in the description. So what's gonna happen is, as soon as you email that email, it'll send you an automatic response. It's not a person, it's a robot. Don't get excited. Oh, it's an automatic response. It even tells you in the header, this is an automatic response. We have received your request for expedite and an officer will reach out to you shortly. The first email I sent, it was just, hi, uh, my name is such and such. This is our case number, whatever. We would like to request expedite. The first email you sent, just say, I would like to request expedite. Because the next email they're going to send their respond that's sent by an actual person will be asking you to submit your uh, evidence, reason to expedite. Don't send that in the first email because it's just going to be a waste of time because it's an automatic reply. They're going to send you that response even if you send them everything. Okay, it's just like a uh, general email response that they send back. Please send the evidence. Okay, send the request. They reply. Please submit your evidence. Now, uh, a friend of mine, or I guess you can call friends. I, I, a couple that I helped get married online paid it forward by helping me with the visa process. They applied November 2021. The wife had her visa in hand in May 2022. That is six months. Their entire journey was six months. From application to visa, six months. Some people are waiting for six months for their application just to be approved. So I'm going to listen to this guy, right? He's the one who said, apply for K3. I applied for K3. Boom. Application approved in one month. He's the one who said, request expedite. I request expedite. Boom. They approved it. So what I'm telling you was what was told to me. But Sean, are you military? You, you look pretty healthy. You don't have a severe sickness. That's true. I am not in military. Shout out to the military people. I could not do that. And as far as I know, I don't have any sicknesses that require my wife to travel here. Uh, emergency, like emergency surgery, or uh, I'm going to be dead in two months. You know, things like that. Knock on wood. Oh, God. So, Sean, how did you get approved for expedite? Well, the truth of it is, 
they'll approve pretty much any expedite reason. You just have to do it properly. You have to word it properly. My mentor, who helped me, who suggested to expedite, he is also not military and he is also not sick. What did he do? He put that he is a frontline worker. He works crazy hours. His mental health has gotten worse. And then being with his wife just makes him happy. It's the only thing that makes him happy. That's what he put. No doctor's note. He just wrote a letter. Uh, he just wrote a letter. That's all he did. And he got approved. Remember, this is six months. Six months. Got the visa in six months. What I did was when I got the response back, please submit your evidence. I sent an email. I am a frontline healthcare worker. Okay, I work at the hospital. I also work a very hectic schedule. I work the graveyard shift. I work 9 p.m. at night to 7 a.m. in the morning. That's 10 hours. I work seven nights in a row, Wednesday night to Wednesday morning of the following week. That's pretty crazy. It's a pretty hectic schedule. I work seven on and seven off. I chose this schedule so I can have seven days off to be with my wife twice a month that's a mini vacation how you like that but working the seven days straight is hard it's healthcare. it's very demanding uh this was still pandemic it was still happening i am risking my life out there right you know vaccinations it's october right i requested expedite back in february how many months ago was that this is still half the world is still going through vaccinations it's a dangerous place that's what i said i have a hectic schedule Evidence. I wrote the letter. I'll... I uploaded a picture of my badge, my work badge, to prove that I am a healthcare worker. And I uploaded my schedule that shows, you know, Puti Punoy works from Wednesday, 9 p.m., 7 a.m., for seven nights till the following Wednesday. My letter continues. I'm a healthcare work, frontline healthcare worker. I work very stressful. Hours, uh, my anxiety and depression has gotten worse ever since my father passed away. My father died in 2015. He died of a heart attack. He was 45 years old. That ruined us. That ruined our family. Personal things aside, I said, my dad died. Ever since my dad died, I've been s s depressed. I live alone, folks. I live by myself. It's depressing. It's lonely. Okay. So I, I put that. I put, I uploaded, uh, my father's, uh, when we, when my dad died, we had a custom like poster made from, you know, Henry Freenis, born 1969 to the, you know, the year he died. I uploaded that. Uh, I also claimed financial hardship. Okay. What does that mean? Well, my wife doesn't work. I don't want her to work. Well, okay. I want her to work, but. You know, you know how it is in the Philippines. I'm not going to get into that. My wife doesn't work. So I pay for everything. I pay for the rent, electricity, Korean, you know, water, groceries, gas. I pay for everything over there for her. I pay for that and I pay for my own gustos, my own bills here, my own rent, my own water and electricity and groceries. I'm essentially paying rent twice, electricity twice, yada, yada. So I'm claiming financial hardship. Wrote in the letter. The longer my wife stays in the Philippines, the more financial hardship I will have. Because I'm just spitting out money. Sean, why does your wife mind your business? <laughs> mind your business. As soon as my wife gets here, she will work and help me. That's the plan. But for now, I want my wife to live comfortably. I want to spoil my wife. I said personal choice I am making. Sean, you're stupid for spoiling your wife. You're just wasting your money. Love blinds people. Sean, you're stupid. Love doesn't blind people. You got to work together. It's a partnership. Shut up. <laughs> I just love my wife a lot, okay? Anyway, I uploaded uh, bank statements, receipts that I was sending her money, and I asked my wife to send me pictures of the receipts of her paying the electricity, water, and stuff like that, Wi-Fi. I uploaded all that into the email as a package. I emailed it back to the NVC expedite, and they responded. Uh, Dear sir, ma'am, we are willing, the U.S. Embassy in Manila is willing to expedite this case. As soon as we receive uh, 
the NVC civil documents and requirements. Remember, I did this before we submitted the NVC. So they were just, they just, they need us to be DQ'd, documentingly qualified for the expedite. Now, remember, I'm not expediting the NVC stage. I'm expediting the ability to book an appointment. Because once you're DQ'd, normally you wait for them to schedule an appointment for you, but you can schedule it yourself if you get it expedited. So what happens? After you get DQ'd, you email these people again. Because, yeah, they told you it's approved, but they don't they don't automatically do everything. You have to email them again. Once you're DQ'd, email them with your case number. And, hello, we just received confirmation that we were DQ'd, docu documentally qualified, and we would like to, uh, we were approved for expedite request. I, I attached the email saying we were approved, and then went from there. Sean, what stage are you at? Medical exam is next on the list of things to do. Oh, it's getting close, Sean. For those following you, for those of you following our journey, I apologize for these low quality videos. I'm not a full time vlogger. Sean, you you're off for a week. Yeah, I sleep the whole time. <laughs> so I just make these vlogs unprofessional. But anyway, this is it, folks. Medical exam. What's after the medical exam? Interview. That information is classified. For now, when my wife's interview is, but I, I, when it happens, I'll tell you. Just know that once we were DQ'd and I emailed them back saying, hey, we got DQ'd, please proceed with the expert request. Our case was transferred to the embassy in Manila in three days. Now, don't make this mistake I did. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, very clear. Are you listening? Hi. Maridi kayo mabuti. Listen very carefully. This was not told to me. NBC did not tell this to me. I had to find this out the hard way. Once your case is, okay, your case is DQ'd, you can follow your case. It says your case is being transferred, DQ'd, your case is being transferred to the following embassy. Keep following it, it'll case is ready. Okay, what happens now? When I check the status, it says case is ready. Please follow the instructions given to you by the NBC on how to schedule a point, yada, yada, yada. So I waited. I waited a few days. I was in the Philippines at the time that we were we got DQ'd. Imagine the excitement. I was with my wife when we got DQ'd. So my my mom was the one watching my apartment here while I was on vacation. I said, Can you check the mail? Maybe they sent a letter. She kept checking the mail, nothing. I kept checking my email. There's nothing. They're not sending me instructions of what to do. So like, do I just how long do I wait for an interview to be? uh scheduled and how is this expedited if i'm waiting you know so i reached out to my mentor he said you gotta be the one to schedule the interview the... i've never heard that it didn't say that there was nothing that said now you are able to be the one to schedule your interview i wish they would fix that but you heard it from me here you thank putty Panoy for telling you what to do say it putty Panoy, thank you you are welcome so what I did was I went on the website, and I will put a link there, to schedule your appointment. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Court is in session. Here's the thing. There are limited slots available. Available. When I found that out, that this whole time I could have been the one to schedule an appointment, I was devastated. I started crying. I said, My wife, Babe, what's wrong? Hey, I'm sorry. You know, I, I dropped the ball. I failed to be. I, I, started, I was depressed. I was like. This whole time we could have made things, you know, go. But no, there's limited slots. I check that website every day for visa appointment. There's no slots available. There's no slots available. I was losing hope. I was depressed. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Reached out to other people. Lady I spoke to said that they upload slots in batches. Does that mean? They upload all the available appointments at once, like once a week, twice a week. She told me to check on Mondays. This was Thursday that I found out that I can be the one to schedule the interview. So Thursday, I checked the website, no appointments. Friday, checked the website, no appointments. I foolishly checked Saturday and Sunday. They're not open Saturday and Sunday. So I was like, oh my God, this is hopeful. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Monday, took a chance, uploaded it. Boom, available slots. When is my wife's interview? I will not tell you. Information is classified. Just be glad I'm telling you the secrets now. Check. Mondays, keep an eye on the status of your 
case being transferred to the embassy. Why am I yelling? I don't know. I'm excited. Keep an eye on it, people. As soon as it says case ready, log on that website. Check for appointments. We scheduled our interview date. Yeah, yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. This is it. This is it. We scheduled an interview. We scheduled her medical exam. I'll make another video on that. Uh, but for those of you, pertaining to those of you in the Philippines, they, starting October 1st, they increased the medical fee. It used to be 16,200 pesos. They increased it to 18,600. I, I will repeat that. Before October 1st, 2022, the medical fee for your medical exam that you need to do for your visa appointment was 16,200 pesos. They increased it to 18,600 pesos. I have been donating plasma twice a week for several months now, trying to, see, trying to make a little extra money because this visa process is expensive. It's cheaper than K-1, but it's expensive. We have an appointment date scheduled for her medical exam. My wife is gonna fly domestic from where she lives now to Manila. So I donated, I kept donating to buy domestic flight ticket. Oh, excuse me. I know why I'm yelling. I'm drinking energy drink. What time is it? 5.49 in the morning. I'm making this video for you guys. You keep asking me. And I'm gonna help you. Because I'm nice like that. Mabait si puti punoy. Not like the other vloggers, uh, all the people on TikTok who are more professional and more bonga bonga. I just give it to you straight. Nothing fancy, you no know, fancy editing intro. I tell you what I did, and it's up to you to copy me or edit it to fit your case. Each case is different. Each case is different. But what I did worked, and I hope it works for you. So, summary. How do you request expedite? You email them. Wait for the automatic response. It's a robot. Remember, it's a robot. Don't get excited. People are getting excited. We got a response from NVC Expedito. It's an automatic email. <laughs> Calm down. Wait for them. Wait for an actual person to reach out to you. Once they reach out to you, asking for the evidence, you upload your evidence. I am not military. I am not sick. So I said I am a frontline healthcare worker. This doesn't apply to everyone, but customize it to make it fit your situation. I have helped someone do the same thing. They claimed they work hard hours. They uploaded their schedule. They claim mental health being separated from their spot. Guys, I've only seen my wife twice. I We got married online. I got married before I met my wife in person. It's a very unique situation. Not a lot of people are sharing the same situation as us, but it's not as common. I live alone. I work a hectic schedule. My dad's dead. My family's separated. It's depressing. I put that in my letter. I wrote a letter. It's not long. It's maybe three paragraphs. You don't want to make it too long. But I expressed, you know, my mental health issues, right? <laughs> Uh, I'm a frontline healthcare worker. I'm putting myself on the line, sacrificing myself. We don't get hazard pay. I've cut COVID twice. It's a different story. And then financial hardship. I know a lot of fams, a lot of foreigner, U.S. foreigners, American citizens sending money to their Filipino spouse. Use that to your advantage. That's what the person did I helped for interviews in November. You are welcome. Ah, uh, is that it? I think that's it regarding how to expedite your visa appointment. I didn't expedite the NVC stage. The NVC stage is going to take three months. So don't screw up. I'll, I'll help you because we screwed up. We got an RFE. One of the most embarrassing things that ever happened in my life. I am very embarrassed. I don't like talking about it. But I'm willing to share that with you guys so you can learn not to make the same mistake I, I made. Okay. If I can do it, you can do it. It's very easy. Don't stress. Take this time to develop that relationship. Long distance relationship sucks. It sucks. I've only seen my wife twice for a total of 26 days in a matter of... I saw her in December. 
saw her again uh, in September. So what, what, what's that? That's nine months. I didn't see my wife. Use that in your letter. All right. I'm going to go work on the NVC video. Uh, again, I apologize for the low quality content that you guys are getting, but I'm just being real with you. Okay, I feel like this is more uh, intimate. I am talking to you. Okay, no fancy intro. There's no subtitles. There's no uh, number one. No, it's just me talking to you. Because you are real people. You feel emotions. I feel emotions. You can do this. All right. Peace. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the other content on this channel and show your support by leaving a like, comment, and subscribe. Maraming salamat!